Morning YouTube, this is Andrea once again, and today I want to speak about letting go of pain or emotional resistance. And the reason why I'm, I am speaking about this is because I feel it is a really important topic, because almost any decision you make in your life is rooted in emotion in some way. Um, not even any main, like, not even the big decisions you make, but many of the small decisions. So it is really important to understand the way you feel and how they influence your behavior. Now, there are three parts of the brain, uh, three main parts. Number one is the reptilian brain. Uh, then there's the limbic brain system and the frontal lobe. Now, starting with the reptilian brain, I don't know whether you believe in evolution or not, but according to the evolution model of thinking, the reptilian brain was one of the first parts to evolve, and they believe this because it is the most basic part of you. It deals with um, simple functions which are just to help you survive, and they believe it was the first to evolve because it was critical that this part evolve first in order for the species to, uh, species, uh, to reproduce and do all of the basic stuff that it need, uh, needed to. This part of the mind deals with things like lust, anger, fear. It is the part of the brain where you experience the flight or fight response. Then we have the um, limbic brain system, which deals with more complex emotions like love. And then we get the frontal lobe, which is the reasoning part of the mind, uh, the one that forms math problems, uh, where higher, or higher ordered thinking is done. Now, when we are in a place of fear or anger, we are in the reptilian part of the brain. And there was a book I read called Emotional Intelligence, which spoke about how when we are feeling fear or anger or lust, what actually often happens is that this reptilian part hijacks your whole brain, meaning that all the sensory inputs that you experience through sight or hearing first goes to that reptilian part of your brain um, and it f functions, it kind of like decides what to do before it goes to the other sections like the frontal lobe uh, because people, it's actually the um, earlier part of the brains which are in more control than the other parts so it is the reptilian brain that has the most power. So what actually happens is when you are in a place of fear, it will normally hijack your ability to reason or, you know, the, or the uh, other parts of the mind. So have you, when you look at two people who are arguing, who are in a fight, you know, have you ever been in an argument yourself and knew you were wrong? but you wouldn't admit it. You stood your ground and like carried on because you wanted to prove that you're right. Or you've been in an argument and the other person was wrong and you're pretty sure that they knew it, but they carried on arguing because they didn't want, um, they didn't want to feel, uh, they didn't want like to be wrong. So the thing with the reptilian brain is that the reason why this happens is because their ability to reason, you know, goes. And normally when a person's angry, they would do a lot of extreme things that they wouldn't do in normal circumstances. When a person is extremely fearful, um, say for example, you've got a fearful height and you're on a plane and you're scared out of your mind, you know the chances of the plane crashing is extremely low. I mean, you're more likely to die in a bus accident but you cannot help the emotions that you're feeling. Say, for example, um, you have ang social anxiety and you're walking in a mall. You know how you're feeling is irrational. No one's looking at you, but yet it's real. Like, it feels completely real and you can't do anything about the emotion. This is because it is hijacking the other parts of your mind. So it is really important to actually be able to deal with our emotions um, and be able to detach from fear or anger because then 
it allows us to be in a higher emotional state and we'll be able to see things more clearly because when we're fearful, we, we cannot see things um, clearly and we cannot make informed decisions. So when you can put yourself into a relaxed, calm state and see everything for what it is, you can make a informed decision. Now, how do you do this? How do you detach from pain? It is it is not really easy to do you know and a lot of people you know a lot in a lot of spiritual videos they say you are in complete control of your emotions but it doesn't feel like that is the case I mean for anyone who's like has this temper problem or an addiction or something you know say for example an addiction they'll tell you but it was your choice to do that and you did it with your own body but it didn't really feel that way it almost felt like you were helpless to that emotion now i don't believe you have uh, full control over your emotions i believe you can if you have the right knowledge and you understand them the problem is there's a lot of stuff we don't understand um about our own emotions and it, it it means that when we try to sort them out, we don't really know how. Now, when it comes to um, emotions, they say there's only two emotions, um, positive and negative. But I would simplify that. I would say there's only one emotion, um, positive emotion, and I would like, and let's call that uh, positive love. Okay, there's only love. And when I speak about love, it's in a general way. Like, it's not just a love that you feel for a parent or a mother or family member. It's also, you know, towards, let's say, for example, you're looking at a beautiful scenery. That's love or any positive emotion, like you enjoy a certain movie. Now, how can there only be one emotion? Then what is the, what are these negative feelings that people uh, feel like fear, anger, jealousy. What are those? Well, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there's a philosophy that there's no opposites in the world, or opposites don't exist in the way you think about them. All opposites are just varying degrees of the same thing. Let me explain. Um, small isn't really the opposite of big, it is the lack of of big it is the lack of size when it comes to light and darkness darkness is just really the lack of light um, when it comes to heat cold you see heat is vibration um, the more faster particles in an object vibrate the more hot it is so heat is so cold is when there's when there's a lack of vibration but you can never get negative like beyond no vibration, meaning it's not vibrating at all. You can never get a minus height, a minus five height or whatever. You know, you cannot, even though you, you know, you can never get minus darkness. You know that saying, um, a candle can take out the darkness, but there can never be enough darkness in a room to take out the light. So when it comes to negative emotions, what you are actually experiencing is the lack of uh, positive emotions, you're experiencing the lack of love. Um, so you are still feeling love, but really little of it. Just like when it comes to coldness, there's still a little bit of heat in the room, but it's really little. So all emotions are one. Now, when it comes to pain, pain is created by blockages. Now, all negative emotions, there are four steps to any to the creation of any negative feeling step number one is wanting something the second step is not having it the third step is like really the big one you resist not having it or you push against it and number four is pain and pain is just really the byproduct of resistance um Actually, I'll, uh, wait, I want to change uh, that, those steps. Number one is wanting something. Number two is not having it or the thought of not having it. Number three is resisting not having it or the possibility of not having it. And four is pain because not in all cases you may not have that thing. For example, 
say you are experiencing fear, like fear of losing something, you know, or fear that people may judge you. Say, say you feeling the fear of somebody judging you. Now, at the moment, you know, what you are experiencing is the possibility of not having their acceptance. So, yeah, I would like to instead change those four steps to the second one I mentioned. Now, resistance is the big word and in this four-step process, and it's really how you can deal with the emotions. Because you cannot deal with this from step one, which is wanting that thing. Um, many people do, though. When they find that they cannot have something in their lives, they go into denial and say, it's fine, I didn't want it anyways, or no, I don't want that thing. You cannot lie to yourself, and you cannot choose to not want something. You know, a contradictory to popular beliefs. Your emotions are like just so inwired in you. They're like engraved that it's extremely hard to just let go of a emotion. You cannot say to yourself, well, I don't want that thing. And when it comes to many spiritual philosophies like Buddhism that teach you to detach, I don't think they are talking about detaching from the emotional joy of that particular thing or experiencing that thing. They're detaching from the need to have that thing. Yes, they can. You see, there's, um, they say that Buddhism is not about not want, uh, not about, um, shit, now I'm trying to remember this quote. Um, yeah, I can't, I, it's, it's, I can't remember what it was, but it's like something like, it's not about, um, not wanting things, you know, it's about detaching from the need to have those things in your life and have them control you. So you cannot really lie to yourself and tell, uh, tell you that you don't want something, okay? By actually forcing yourself to believe that you don't, you're creating more resistance. So just accept that you want it. Tell yourself, I want that thing, okay? It's fine. Then the second way that we could deal with this problem is by step two, um, which is you not having this thing in your life. Now, you could deal with this by actually trying to obtain this thing. So say you don't have the relationship that you want and you feel empty or the house that you want or I don't know, whatever. Um, you could try or acceptance. You could try to go after and get this thing and I'm not saying that you don't try to get this thing in your life, but do not try to run after it in order to be happy because that, that kind of takes the control away from you. It means that you cannot be happy with yourself unless you have this particular thing in your life. And when you don't have it, you are not going to be able to accept yourself. And when you do have it, only when you have this thing, you'll be able to. So really you are not in control of your own self you are like a slave to this external thing outside of yourself so you don't really control your own acceptance you need that particular thing in order to be happy also the second problem is when trying to actually deal with your emotions and find a way of letting go of resistance you see if you need to have that thing in your life in order to be happy then what about the period before, like before you actually get it, you know? Um, the third issue with this is that... Sorry, I just like forgot what I was going to say there. No, the third issue of this is, um, say you actually get this thing in your life. What could happen is that you could become fearful of losing it because your resistance is towards not having it. So then you might have it, but now you have this huge fear of losing it. And I've experienced that before with things that I've badly wanted and then got. And all of a sudden I get this feeling, of, oh, sh oh, flip, I better not screw this up. Like I better hang on to this thing, you know, and what actually happens is that emotion normally ends up ruining it. So, um, yeah, so that's um, the second step, not having it. Then we could try to deal with it from the third step, 
which is the resistance, which is really the best way to dealing with the problem. And I'll explain why in a moment, but I want to now go to the fourth step, which is the pain. And you cannot deal with this from the pain because if you just try to deal with this from the pain by like telling yourself, trying to convince yourself that you don't feel pain, that would be lying to yourself and creating more resistance or ignoring the pain. As you know, um, you can't ignore an emotion and expect it to go. It still exists somewhere with the bo in your body and it's going to manifest in some way. So if you just say, um, I do not feel pain towards this thing, that's a lie. And you are going to, th those feelings are going to like somehow burst out in some way eventually. So the best way to deal with pain is through step three, which is suffering. Uh, no, no, what am I saying? Through step three, which is resistance. Uh, resisting that in which you don't have. Now, my advice to you would be to let go of the resistance. Now, this is easier said than done. When a lot of people, I feel that a lot of people do not understand the concept of letting go of resistance because when they try to let go of resistance, they actually create more in their lives. They start thinking, um, oh no, like, they, they start thinking, my resistance is something bad, and I need to get rid of it, and my pain is something bad. So when they uh, feel resistance, they do one of two things. They either uh, ignore it and try to be more positive, um, which is basically not, which is basically resistance. You know, ignoring something is resisting, uh, resisting it, not looking at it. It's pushing away. Um, or they fight against it and they say, no, I don't feel this way. Again, that is resistance. So they just ultimately end up dealing with the resistance by resisting it once more. We are so used to this idea that in order to get rid of something, we've got to fight against it. Um, you know, you've got to like push, like, uh, push for it like to stop. But it doesn't work that way when it comes to emotions. And in fact, by pushing against it, you are only creating more of it. So then how do we deal with our resistance and pain? If we cannot push against it, uh, ignore it or fight it, what do we do? Well, you solve this problem through the opposite of what resistance is. So the opposite of resistance would be allowing and acceptance. So you deal with the problem uh, by accepting your resistance, accepting your pain, bringing it into your conscious awareness and allowing it to be in your space and focus on it. Now that may seem a bit contradictory because we are actually trying to get rid of our resistance and now I'm actually telling you um, to experience it. But it's actually through experiencing it and understanding it that you can solve the problem. You see, a misunderstanding a lot of people have is that they see their resistance as an enemy, um, as something that is wrong that they need to stop. It is, don't see it as an enemy, but rather as a friend, or more accurately, a teacher. The resistance is trying to point, um, point you out to something inside of yourself that needs healing, a wounded part of you. And the reason why this place is wounded is because it's a part of you that you have been resisting. Now, do you remember what I said earlier? There's only one emotion, love. Uh, all negative emotions are the lack of love. So what happens is there's a part of you that you are resisting. And because you are resisting it, that part doesn't receive love. And because it doesn't receive love, you experience that as pain. So what you need to do is find what that part is and find a way to accept it. You cannot do that if you don't allow yourself to experience uh, your negative feelings fully. So what you do is when a negative feeling come, like just pops up, you stop, at, stop if you have time. If you don't, try to make a time later and you say, I am fully and completely with you at this moment and you allow it to enter your awareness. Um, you be with it emotionally and you also try to understand it. Um, then what happens is you say to yourself, I release, um, 
uh, I understand this emotion and I release resistance towards it. Now, when you say this, don't just assume that, that it's worked and then go on with things. Because what, uh, pay attention to your body. A lot of, uh, a, a big problem that a lot of people like do is that they don't pay attention to what they, their own subconscious is telling them. So you could say, I am releasing resistance and I'm in a place of acceptance. And then you feel this tightening in your throat or this knot in your stomach. And what that basically is, um, it's basically you telling yourself one thing, but another part of your personality in the subconscious saying something else. Um, so you might just say, I do not resist this thing, but um, another part is saying something else. So you clearly do not agree with what you're saying. Now, if you go on acting as if you've released resistance, you are going to be ignoring that part of you that is still currently resisting it. So remember what we said, you, you cannot deal with a problem by ignoring it. You have to go into it. So if the feeling is still there, if the resistance is still there, you have to go back and you need to pay attention to that sensation you got in your body, whether it was like this tightening in your throat or not in your stomach or this tense, you know, you start feeling tense. Ask, ask yourself, um, why was I getting tense? Now, take that feeling and put it into words. Like, you see, something a lot of people don't understand is that the subconscious actually has a conversation with you all the time, but it doesn't speak English, it speaks, or any language, uh, with words. It speaks through emotions, images, feelings. So you take that feeling that you just had and you put it into words and you say, um, okay, let me, let me try to find a specific example. Say you just broke up with someone and you're in resistance towards that situation. Now you want to release the pain. So you say, I release the situation of not having this person in my life. And then you get a knot in your throat. And then you look at this knot and you put it into words. And then you say, what this part of me is trying to tell myself is that I cannot be happy. Uh, or this part is, t uh, so a word could be, it feels like I'm lying to myself when I say that. Or... How could I be happy when this person's not in my life? Once you have, okay, so that could be the sentence. Once you have put this into a sentence, ask yourself, is this, um, is this a correct translation? So say the sentence out loud and pay attention to your body. If you get any tightening or tension or whatever, you know that there's something you need to add or change. But if it feels right, uh, go with that. Now, then say, okay, well, um, I do not have, so it feels like I'm lying to myself. Is that true? And then you look at it from there. Well, uh, uh, no, I, I'm not lying to myself because I accept the fact that this person is not in my life, but I can still be happy and like grateful with who I am without having that particular person. And then you ask yourself, do I agree with that? And your emotions will give feedback um, you know, your subconscious will give feedback through your feelings. And if it doesn't agree, ask it why it doesn't agree. And just have this conversation back and forth with your subconscious until you have reached resolution. And how would you know when you experience resolution? You, uh, you will know because you will feel a lot more lighter. And there will be no tension or, you know, resistance in your body. And what actually happens is when, this, when you do this... Um, with different areas of your life, you start releasing resistance um, towards each thing. You start feeling more and more light, and what eventually happens is you naturally just start feeling great, and you don't have to try to do it. You don't have to say any positive affirmations or do anything you love. You could just be sitting in your room, and you feel amazing, and you don't know why. And the reason for this is because naturally we are born loving ourselves. I mean, you look at a child, they naturally love themselves and everything, and they're happy. We learn to resist as we get older. And from a, actually from a young age, we start resisting things and finding things to push against. And over time, this forms blockages in ourselves, and we can't reach the same 
level of emotions as we did when we were a child. But when we release the resistance, there's no blockages. The natural love that's always flowing through you can reach those places and you'll feel happy. I mean, the first time, like, I actually under, the first time I did this, I felt amazing and like nothing actually happened. And I wondered to myself, should I be feeling this good? I mean, nothing actually happened. But the, you know, the fact of the matter is it's good because when you feel a positive emotion, it affects your behavior. And it's been proven that when you're in a state of love or happiness, you can see your situation more clearly and make more informed decisions. Do you remember what we said about the reptilian brain and or that when you're in a place of fear, you're in a lot of resistance and you cannot see your situation clearly. And when you're in a place of acceptance, you can understand clearly what is going on. Also, something to keep in mind is, um, I do not know what your subconscious is going to say back to you as you do this exercise, but something I think uh, that will commonly come up to most people is the feeling uh, their, body, uh, their mind will give them the feeling that they're lying and they'll, they'll appear somewhere in their body. Um, that So when you say, I release resistance, your body will tell you, well, I have no need. I mean, like, uh, I'm almost lying to myself because I shouldn't be feeling that way. I shouldn't be feeling at ease because look at my situation. It's just so messed up. Now, like, and then you feel like, how do I argue against that? Well, if, you're, if your emotions say that back to yourself, what you need to understand is what is the purpose of emotions? You see, if you have the view that your emotions are there to be a map of what is meaningful and show you what is meaningful, um, you might have this problem. Now, it is true that your emotions are supposed to be a map of what is meaningful in life, but what you must also understand is that um, you need to ask yourself, why are my emotions a map like of what is meaningful and what I should be doing? Um, what I mean by a map is like we feel fear in certain circumstances like for example if you're about to jump off a building you'll feel fear and that is good because it's showing you that jumping off that building is not meaningful you'll die you feel um, get this good feeling when you eat food or when you get acceptance and what your body is telling you is that this sensation is meaningful but why would you why are our emotions a map of what is good and bad the reason for this is so we can go after those meaningful things in our lives, so we can find out what we want and try to get more of that while getting less of what we don't want. Now, what happens is the reason uh, why our bodies want us. So the issue is that uh, so mainly our emotions are there to make our lives more meaningful, right? Now, if you have this negative emotion, like you have this irrational fear, okay, or you've gone through, uh, someone's died in your family and it's been years later, but it's still affecting you, you haven't been able to work or anything, um, and you can't cope. Now, that emotion isn't bringing you more meaning in your life, it isn't serving you. Now, so you need to be able to let go of it. So anyways, that's just everything I have to say and I'll speak more about um, how to talk to your subconscious in another video. Something I spoke about earlier in my first video was that I was going to do almost like an online dream, dream journal where I speak about my experiences. I decided I was um, not going to do that because a lot of the dreams I've been having are personal so but I will be um, doing videos on how to astral project and clairvoyance and stuff. Anyways, nice speaking to you. Cheers.